I'm so excited. There's so many people here. Awesome. Okay, so welcome to the webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about customizing your client's experience through gallery settings. So we'll go ahead and get started. What we're going to learn about today, this is kind of an empty screen. There's only like three things and then a little pro tip. Don't let this deceive you because there is a ton of stuff that we're going to be going over today, um, especially under the third part, gallery settings and presets. Um, so this may not look like a lot, but this is actually probably going to go a little bit over the 30 minutes that I try to keep these webinars to. We might go to 45. Um, and why does this keep popping up? I'll drag it over here so you guys don't have to look at it. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna go into any fluff or anything. We will keep um, keep this kind of on track and going over all of this stuff. Awesome. Hey, Tracy, it's good to see you too. See, I keep looking at the chat because I wanna know who you guys all are. I love having such a big group with us today. All right, let's get started. So first, let's talk about gallery structure. Now, this is like super basic stuff if you've been around for a while. But if you're newer, um, we're going to start with the basic stuff and then we're going to build on that. So gallery structure. A gallery is like the overarching thing where all of your photos are housed. Some people just have a gallery with images in it. Um, usually if you've got, you know, maybe less than 100 images or so, um, and it's maybe just like a family um, session or a newborn session, you might just have a gallery. If you do weddings or volume photography of any sort or anything where you have lots and lots of photos, um, you will likely be using albums. So an album is inside a gallery. So at the gallery level, you can have certain settings like price sheets, digital rules, and you can password protect it. Um, but then at the at the album level, you have control over the album level passwords and album level digital rules. You cannot have different price sheets at the album level. The price sheet is at the, the main gallery level as are most of the settings that we're gonna go over today. Um, if you do certain types of volume photography, um, whether it be maybe sports or school photography, you may have sub albums and sub sub albums. So album hierarchy can go four levels deep and those sub albums can also be password protected and have um, unique sub album digital rules. So I'll give a quick example that we see quite often is a school photographer may have a gallery for a school and then an album for let's say a grade and then a sub album for a certain teacher and then sub sub albums for each of the children. Um, so that that is one way that people can organize their galleries. So this may not pertain to you if you don't do um, like super high volume stuff, but it's always good to know that it's out there if you need it. Now there's also secret vendor albums that are only accessible by direct link. And people use it in all different ways. But I'll tell you the reason that we um, created that was because we found that wedding photographers specifically were asking for the ability to share um, certain images with certain download capabilities only to their vendor. They didn't want the vendor to see any other images in the gallery at all. And they didn't want to have to create a whole nother gallery um, and upload a certain number of photos for that vendor because then that would take up photo count in their, um, or photo, yeah, photo count in their shoot proof account. And they didn't want to do that because it's the same photo. Why should you have to upload it to two different galleries? So we created vendor albums, which are within a gallery. The regular people who are visiting the gallery can't see it. And the people who can see it, which is typically a vendor, cannot see the other images. Um, so usually, um, these are things like maybe you share it with a florist and you want the florist to be able to download an image, um, maybe at high resolution for use in marketing, but maybe you want to have your watermark on it. So you have that kind of control um, in those vendor albums. Awesome. And it looks like Jessica used those for her bar and bat mitzvahs. Awesome. Yeah. So people use them um, in lots of different ways, but that's the in intention for the use. Um, so use it as you wish. Okay. Let's go on to um, gallery status. And I'm gonna open up uh, my demo account here in just a second, but I wanted to kind of go over everything that you might see on your main 
um, photos page within your account. So active galleries are ones that clients can view. And those images, of course, count towards your photo plan. Inactive are ones that you either turned off um, the access to for a certain reason, maybe you made it inactive on purpose, or you had an expiration date on an active gallery and it expired and it automatically went inactive. Clients can't view anything there, but those images still are counting towards your photo plan. Pre-release is um, a certain type of gallery that you can um, limit access to. So people can go there, they can land on a certain page that asks them to enter their email address so that they can then be um, notified when the gallery is ready to share. So those, of course, still go towards your photo plan. Um, people use that for like maybe when they're getting ready, um, putting the gallery together. Maybe they are um, allowing their bride or groom to collaborate with them and want only them to be able to see it. Um, so it's kind of limiting access to everybody else. Those are a couple of reasons you would do that. Um, archived. Clients cannot view archived galleries. And you really can't do much with it until you take it out of archiving. Um, but when you put a gallery in archiving, the great part is that it retains all of the gallery visitor information. So as we start to begin to think about next year, um, what a lot of people do is they archive their galleries throughout the year um, as they expire because they don't want them to count towards their photo plan anymore, right? So stick them over into archiving, um, keep it all year long. And then when the holidays come along, um, you can send out and you can reactivate them temporarily and set up a campaign to send um, reminders to people, even from the very beginning of the year. Hey, the holidays are upon us. You might want to order some gifts for family and friends. Um, so it's a great way to make some extra sales at the holiday time at the end of the year. In fact, I just got an email yesterday from my niece's wedding um, which was back in February, and I totally had forgotten about it. And I got an email from her photographer reminding me um, that the holidays are coming and maybe someone might want um, some images. And I actually did. I ordered my mom. I, I know that my mom doesn't have any photos from her wedding, so I ordered my mom some gifts. So there you go. The sale worked. And I even knew she was selling to me, and I still fell for it because I wanted the images. All right, so pro tip. There is a search and filter box that helps you quickly find um, galleries. And let me show you where all this stuff lives. Right up here at the top, here's the search and filter box. Have you guys ever seen this box? Um, uh oh, I'm on the wrong, sorry, I was on the wrong page. All right, the search and filter box is right here. Um, you can search for galleries lots of different ways. Um, and it kind of helps you filter by maybe if you want to see your private galleries versus your public galleries. Um, this is a handy tool, especially if you are a very prolific photographer and have lots and lots of galleries here. That will be your friend. All right, you can see all galleries here. Then you can filter by maybe only active galleries. You can see which galleries are inactive. You can see pre-released. And then if you have archived galleries, you would find them here. All right, so this stuff is kind of basic, right? But who knows? You might not have known all of that stuff. Now you do. Let's go on to our next topic, linked contacts. Um, every gallery that has a client who you know that you're dealing directly with should have a linked contact. Um, this doesn't really apply to most of the time volume or like school photography, things like that. But if you are dealing one-on-one -on -one with a client, um, you should have a linked contact in that gallery. That person can have their own digital permissions. You can turn on favorites notification for them so that if you rely on them selecting favorites for certain things in your business, you can allow them to choose their favorites and then click a button to notify you that they have finished selecting their favorites. Um, you can also allow them to hide and label images and they can have access to um, pre-release galleries. We have a question here from Kelly. Um, can you link multiple contacts? You are correct, Kelly. You cannot have multiple linked contacts right now. That is something that people ask for a lot and I think it would be really useful. So I know that's, um, I know that it is in our backlog of feature requests. So that would be awesome if we could do that. I'll put a word in for you guys. Um, okay, so let's look at what it looks like when you 
link a contact. You can tell if a gallery has a linked contact because it has this little chain linky thing here with the name. Okay, so you can see this one's in pre-release. I've linked myself to most of these because that only makes sense. Um, if it doesn't have a linked contact, you won't see anything there. Um, let's say I want to link a contact. I would just click on the gallery and go right here to add a contact. Okay, so you can either choose a contact from here or you can create a new contact there. Um, so it's my firm belief that if you have a gallery where it makes sense, where you have a um, single client that you're working with, it does make sense to have a linked contact. Okay, let's see. Gallery accessibility. This is kind of basic, but you guys would be really surprised at how many questions we get about this. Did you know that public galleries appear on your ShootProof homepage? Anyone who goes to your homepage will have access to all of those galleries. Of course, if they're you know password protected, they won't be able to get into them, but they will be able to see them. Private galleries are only accessible using a direct link. So please be careful with that. Um, further, pre-release galleries, as we talked about before, are only accessible to linked contacts um, with admin permissions when it's in pre-release. Um, so let me show you a little bit about public versus private galleries. <coughs> Excuse me. In your settings, which we'll go over one by one um, in a little bit, but in your settings, you have gallery um, accessibility, access and privacy here, um, public and private here. These are, you need to be watching this very closely um, because some folks accidentally um, maybe change their preset up and make all of their galleries public. And maybe they don't have galleries that should be public to everybody. And what your where these go is out on your shootproof homepage. When you click there, this is your homepage. All right. So I'll give you an example here. If you look down, I actually made a couple of galleries, one called newborn, one called weddings, and one called seniors. These three are public and the rest of the galleries of mine are private. So when I go to my shootproof homepage, I only see these public galleries. Okay, so keep an eye on that. People use this shootproof homepage for lots of reasons. Um, some people totally ignore it, and that's fine. If you're totally ignoring it, make sure everything is private. Um, but if you're using it, you can configure it in all different ways. Um, so if you want things to show up there, make them public. All right, keep your clients' images safe. <laughs> this is a really important topic, you guys. Um, I mean, with everything that goes on online, there are several things that you can do to keep your clients' images safe, okay? So you can make them private, so they're accessible only by a direct URL. On top of that, you can password protect them, and not with their name, not with the numerical date of their wedding. Come up with something, you know, kind of hard. Um, you don't the whole point of password protecting it is to make it hard to get to. Um, and we have found that actually clients appreciate that. So they know that you are keeping their images safe when you do that. Further, you can require visitors to enter an email address to view the images. Um, I mean, people can put fake email addresses in there if they want, of course. But if you're going through your gallery visitor report and you see some weird looking addresses, you can kind of think, okay, this does not look, um, someone has accessed this gallery, I need to change the password. So um, I always require visitors to enter an email address um, because I like to spy on who's in there and keep an eye out for things that are happening that are kind of weird. Um, okay, so also secure on online client galleries are shared directly with a unique contact or a, a linked contact and have unique download permissions just for them. So if you keep it, um, if you keep a gallery, um, it's public, it's not password protected. Um, people don't have to enter an email address to view the images. And you just put that out there for everybody and you have download all on. Um, anybody out there on the internet can find that and download those images, okay? So 
these are just a few things to keep track of. We want to keep your clients images safe because we know that doing that is a reflection on you and you want to give your clients the best service possible. All right, enough about that. Let's talk about digital rules here for a minute. Um, these are things that you can configure in your galleries to allow people to download images without paying. Uh, so these digital rules, which we'll go over in detail in just a second, um, can be for all visitors. So it's like a blanket. Okay, so everybody who comes to this gallery can download all of the images or five images or however you can figure that. Or you can kind of lock that down and say only the link contact has the right to download anything. Anyone else who wants to do it, maybe they have an option if you add it on the price sheet to pay for it. Um, but otherwise, only the link contact can do it. Then you can even lock it down further and say, okay, only people who go to this one certain specific album can download. Um, so that's kind of if you are, again, maybe volume, school photography, something like that. And you don't want somebody to go in and have access to everybody's galleries and download everything. You just want them to get their one child's images. That's how you would do that. And then lastly, of course, we're back to the secret vendor albums again. You can make unique digital rules for those so that maybe only the vendor can download from just that one um, album and they can have special privileges as well. Um, you know, maybe they have to enter a pin or maybe you want a special watermark on those. Um, so that um, would be unique for that case. All right, this is the bulk of the uh, webinar right here. We're going to talk about all of the gallery settings. Now that you know a little bit about high level about all of that stuff, we're going to dive in and we're going to actually look in each of the settings. Okay, so general, um, that's active, inactive, pre-release, all that stuff. Layout, that's self-explanatory. Um, most of the stuff is self-explanatory, but when we get into the nitty gritty of it, um, there's more detail that I want to share. So let's go ahead and jump in. I don't know. We'll choose this gallery. Let's just go to settings and we'll start from the top and work our way down. Okay. So first the general tab, um, active, inactive, and pre-release. We talked about that. So you guys should know what that means. If you do move something to pre-release, you have the option to um, have a pre-release date um, so that if you want it to automatically release to clients on a certain date, um, that would happen on that date. Otherwise, you don't have to enter a date and then you can go in and manually release it anytime you want by coming in here and clicking active. And if you do that, it'll ask you, do you want to notify everybody? And you have the option to say yes or no, you want to send or don't want to send an email to everybody who has visited the gallery. Um, I'm going to show you a pre-release gallery here in just a second. Let me finish going through here. Um, okay, date options. Shoot date is required. The order that galleries show up when you go to photos and galleries is determined by this shoot date. So if you want to have your galleries um, in your account arranged differently, you can just adjust the shoot date. That's how they're arranged. It took me a while to learn that. I worked here for a little bit before I learned that little tidbit. Um, and then we have a couple optional dates here, order due date and gallery expiration date. Um, the gallery expiration date, um, you know, people use that quite a bit. So their gallery expires on a certain date. The order due date, um, I see people use that sometimes if they want to set up an email campaign um, kind of based around an order due date. Other than that, I don't see people use it too, too often. And custom link, you can actually make your own custom link for clients um, by typing something right in here. All right, I'm going to just X out of this real quick and show you guys pre-release because I do have a pre-release gallery right here. Here we go. Okay, so this pre-release gallery has a linked contact, which is me, and I have an access code, which you can see right here. And in pre-release, I, as the linked contact, have the ability to hide and label images in the gallery. So if I am a bride, for instance, I might not want my Uncle Bob to see my getting ready photos so I can um, choose those images in the gallery and hide them so nobody but me can see them. Also, me as the photographer, not as a link contact, but as the photographer, you can create labels and you can um, set a limit to these labels so that, so that your clients 
artists can go in and make selections for different things in the gallery. So for instance, that for the bridal album, I want her to be able to 60 images, maybe 25 for the parent album. I'm going to give her a mobile app. So I'm going to limit her selection there. And then maybe I offer some retouch services and I want to know which ones she wants retouched. And so I'm going to leave that unlimited there for her um, to do. So I'm not going to save because I didn't make any changes, but I want you guys to see what it looks like from the client's perspective when we go in. Um, now you'll notice that my access code is one, two, three, four, five, six, I think for this one. Don't use that access code. This is where we need to talk about security. Um, so you'll see right here, it says register. I'm going to click to register. And then this is the little preview message that you can customize. And we can go ahead and um, enter your email address. So when I click on here to enter my email address, this email is added um, to the gallery visitor report. But if I, as the um, linked contact, want to access, you as a photographer need to give them this link, admin pre-register URL. So this link is the only way that someone other than you as a photographer can access this gallery. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a new tab and enter that there. You can see I made a custom URL for this, Alex and Zoe get married right there. All right, so I'm gonna enter admin mode. So as the bride, I'm already thinking, this is so cool. I'm special. <laughs> I'm going to enter admin mode and it's going to ask me for my access code, which I think is one, two, three, four, five, six and submit. All right. I'm getting all these pop-ups from Google. Okay. So here I'm in as the linked contact in admin mode. You can see a few things that are already happening here. See these little icons here? This means that this has already been labeled. This one has been hidden. And I'll show you what it looks like for the bride or whoever it is that you're sharing this with. You can hide an image by clicking on this. And then once they click into the image, you can see they have the option to label. And now I'm thinking, okay, I've got all these options for labeling. I think I'm going to put this in the bridal album. Maybe I also want it retouched. So I'll do that and I'll click done. Okay. So now we can see my labels up here and we can see that it's hidden down here. All right. So that is what this pre-release mode does for linked contacts. Um, on your end, it's super helpful because once your linked contact makes these selections, you have all of this information right here. Okay, so let's say I know, maybe I've gone ahead and selected all 60, let's imagine for the bridal album. If I click in here, I can see the images that were selected for the bridal album. Oh, I added one, that's why there's three now. Um, so I come in here, select all, and actually, I don't even think I need to select them all. I think I go to more actions and download photos. Okay, so I'm going to download these to um, my computer so I can go ahead and start building the album. Um, so that's one use, one use case that you might want um, to use labels for. But I know that people have their clients, you know, make selections for lots of things, not just albums. So you get to control whatever your labels are. Um, you get to make them up all on your own. <laughs> Heidi, that's <laughs> this is a fan, fan freaking tastic. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's so many people do not know about this feature and it's super, super useful. Um, so yes, Brian, you can also use the favorites for selections. Um, labels are great if you want people to select for multiple things. So like, you know, you can say, okay, favorite for all of your bridal album images or whatever. But if you also want to create a parent album, if you also want to do a mobile app, if you also want to let them do multiple things, um, this kind of takes the place of the favorites. Uh, one other thing I wanted to tell you since Brian brought up um, the favorites is that you can turn on the ability to allow client, uh, allow the contact to send favorites. So let's take a look at what that looks like because I forgot to mention that before. So we're back in here. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and select a couple favorites. So this is me as the client, okay? I'm coming in and selecting my favorite. Oops, there we go. And I'm gonna come up here to favorites. This is a new feature, by the way. So if you guys um, missed it, then you're not, you haven't missed it for long. This is brand new. So here's my favorites and I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna click send favorites. Okay, so it's gonna be from me to the photographer and then message and you type it in, okay? There you go. Actually, let me refresh this real quick because I thought there was another way. Kelly, I'm not sure. Um, would you mind looking in the help center because can you drop a link from the help center for the new favorites notification? Because there's another way to do this. I thought there was a way. Oh, here we go. I just needed to refresh. Never mind, Kelly. Thank you, though. You probably already found it. Um, I needed to refresh you guys. So we turned on the notifications for favorites. So here is how you can have your client easily send the favorites notification um, once they're finished making those selections. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I knew it should have been working a different way. So you can type in a little message and then they click send. That way they don't have to enter your email address um, because they might not have it handy. So we take care of doing that for them. <laughs> awesome. Great. Okay. So we are done with that. Okay. Let me go back to here. Sorry. Got a little um, sidetracked with all this pre-release stuff. There's a ton of stuff you can do in pre-release. Um, so let's go back. Okay. General, let's go to layout now because we're finished with pre with the general. We'll go to layout. All right. So intro page, obviously there's lots of different ways that you can have your intro page look. So you can go through here and kind of see a preview for all of them. You can also select whether your images are more predominantly, um, horizontal or vertically oriented. This is my favorite kind of newish thing in the last year is the image size and image spacing. Um, you can make them like, you know, giant images with tiny spacing or however you want it to look. And then gallery intro messages. If you guys haven't looked into this, this is kind of cool too. So you can have no gallery intro message. You can enter a text message. So when people go to um, your gallery with the link that you provide, they can see like a message pop up real quick. Um, they can dismiss it, you know, read it. But we all know that people sometimes don't read text, do they? Their emails, their intro messages, whatever. So you can also make a cool video for them because we know people love to watch videos. They don't like to read. Um, so all you have to do is enter like a headline, basically a title for your video, and then just drop a YouTube or Vimeo link in here. So people use this in different ways. Maybe you've created a video for your client specifically. You can put that in there. You can make them a custom video, um, maybe introducing them to their gallery and giving them a walkthrough and telling them how to order. So you can use it in all kinds of ways. Um, it's kind of a cool little thing. So you can go as crazy or as not crazy with it as you wish. Okay. Gallery is the next setting. This is kind of an easy one. So this is where you pick your color set, your logo and all that stuff, the language that you want your clients to see. If you want a marketing banner at the top, which you probably saw over here, um, this little marketing banner at the top, um, you can select to enter that here. You can also link something. So if they do click on that banner, um, you can take them to another page, whether it be you know your blog post or whatever. Um, there's multiple uses for that. Um, it will open another tab so that they can view whatever else you want them to see. You can have the banner expire, which is great if you have it attached to a discount. Um, so if that discount is expiring on a certain date, make sure the banner expires on that date too. Um, these are just some random things like show file names on the thumbnails. If you have a music plan, you can add a playlist here. You can allow them to um, share on social media. You can allow them to view images in black and white if you'd like. It's just kind of like a very basic black and white filter. And then the home page link that's at the top of the page, you can either have it go to your Shootproof homepage or your website. Moving on to access and privacy, which we've already talked about. Um, as you can see, I have this private. I should also have it password protected if I'm being a good um, 
photographer who values my client's privacy. Uh, let's see. Next is free digitals. We have no free digitals here. So let's create a free digital rule. We talked about it earlier. Now we're going to actually do it. So you can see we can make a rule for all visitors to this gallery, all visitors to a specific album within the gallery, or just for one specific person, the linked contact, which is me. Okay, so let's make one just for all visitors to the gallery. We have a couple of templates here that we've created. A question that people ask a lot is, how do I create my own template? The answer is you can't right now, um, but we would love for that functionality to happen. So fingers crossed that that will be a thing. Um, this rule name right here, your clients will actually see this when they go to download something. So make it something that they can understand. Um, so like maybe original size, okay? They will see this. Who should be able to download for free? Maybe only people who have a pin. So this is a great way to also protect downloads and maybe make it some random numbers. And then what size should the files be? original social, which I think would default to 900 pixels on the long side, or custom if you have, uh, maybe you want it to be 1200 on the long side. Um, because I chose um, unlimited downloads, I don't have the ability to change this, but if I did not choose unlimited, I would be able to change that. Um, because I said they could um, download unlimited, show a download all button at the top, of the gallery is what I tend to do so that they don't have to go through and download each one individually. They can just click download all. And then apply a watermark to the downloaded files. People don't typically do this for these free digitals, but totally up to you. If you do want to apply a watermark, um, you can choose from watermarks. If you have multiple watermarks, um, you can choose between them. And then of course, include a print release if you have one you can copy and paste it here. It's important to note that this print release is only for the free digitals, not through the shopping cart, okay? This is people just going to the gallery and downloading from there. Um, so that print release will be delivered to them along with the images. All right, shopping cart. Okay, so some of you people, you lovely people who are not in the US will only see the traditional store in the US, we have this new thing called Print Store powered by Collage, which we hope to expand internationally soon. Um, we're just starting out to make sure it works great in the US and then we'll expand internationally. Um, but if you are um, international and want to kind of take a peek with us, I will show you. Um, let me just kind of give a little um, disclaimer here. A traditional store experience, this is um, what you're used to doing through our partner labs. Okay, so this is like Miller's, um, Loxley, if you're, you know, over there in the UK. So these um, professional print labs that you know, and you create your own price sheet with your own pricing, okay? The print store is a little bit different. The print store is, was mainly um, intended for people who are all-inclusive photographers who give their clients all of the digital downloads as part of their session fee. So you're being profitable by selling those digitals ahead of time. But they wanted a chance to maybe upsell a little bit um, without having to do the work of creating price sheets and all that stuff. Um, so if you have Shoot Proof Pay set up, you would be able to um, set up the print store. I don't have it in this account, but I can go through in another account if you guys wanna see it. Um, maybe we'll do that at the Q&A at the end. If you are interested, let me know. Okay, for now, we'll do the traditional store experience. We have the price sheet selection here, minimum order amount. Um, if you want to order packages only, in other words, if you have packages and you don't wanna let your clients order items a la carte, you would turn on offer packages only. If you take payment from outside of Shoot Proof, you can allow the client to pay later so that they can check out um, and place their order but not have to pay. Um, delivery options, these are kind of self-explanatory. I all you ship to client only. That way I know that they are paying um, for shipping. And then an optional message shown. A print release here, if you enter one here, this is going to be for purchased digitals. Um, so if, if you want to give a different print release for purchased digitals, you just enter that right here. 
and then allow cropping. Are you a nice photographer who allows your clients to crop images or does that scare you? Um, if you want to allow them to crop, you can turn that on right here. Just remember, you always have the option before you submit an order to the lab to um, adjust cropping. So if they do something crazy, you can always um, kind of do redo it at the, um, the order. Um, what is my, what's the word I'm looking for? Order approval. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. That's it. We're almost at the end. Let me do advanced and then we'll do presets and then we'll attack all of these questions because I see lots of stuff going on in the chat. So we're almost to the end here and then we'll get to the questions that Kelly hasn't been able to answer because she's probably over there typing furiously. All right. So advanced, um, there are a few things you can do. You can hide the all photos album. Um, if you have albums in your gallery, let me see if I can get home here. If you have albums within your gallery, uh, which I don't for this one, um, but basically you would see your albums and then you would also see all photos. So your clients can either browse um, within each album or they can click the all photos album to see them all. If you don't want that all photos album to be there, you can just hide it by turning this off. If you are sensitive about having um, a photo count on your albums. For instance, if you're a school photographer and you don't want Timmy's mom to know that Timmy has more images in his album than Billy does, then you would hide album photo count. Um, you can hide albums within a gallery. So this also would be for something like school photography, where you only want people to see their one album. You don't want them to be able to navigate back out to um, see the whole entire gallery. This is something, if you want to do this, you can contact support and they can turn this um, functionality on for you. If you use categories on your homepage, um, you can create categories and add um, this gallery to a category. You can automatically send galleries to archive after expiration. So that's a good way to kind of automatically do this so you don't have to remember each time to go and send it to archiving. If you use email campaigns, this is where you select it. and if you, again, are more volume and you have lots and lots of albums within your gallery and you don't feel like going through and selecting the image for each cover, you can set the album cover images automatically here. Okay, that was a lot, wasn't it? <laughs> so very last thing that I want to show you here is gallery presets. So once you go through all of those settings, you don't want to do that every time you create a new gallery, do you? No. So you save it as a preset. Um, you can have multiple presets in your account um, and you can have one designated as your um, default. Maybe that's the one that you use a lot. Um, but presets are chosen upon upload. So I've made all these changes and I want to save these settings as a preset. So I'm going to click save these settings as a preset and then I'm going to click save. And Oh no, did my internet go out? Good, oh goodness, I was scared there for a second. Okay, preset name, I will call this one, I don't, oh look, demo. <laughs> I've called one demo before. I'll click create preset. Uh-oh, I guess I need to do Aaron's preset. Awesome, okay. Where do you find presets, you might ask. Now that I've saved it, when you go here to photos and galleries, over here is this button called um, presets. Okay, so you can see I've made a bunch of presets. Okay, I've got demo, demo two, Karen's preset, but these real ones here are newborn, seniors, and wedding. So if you do multiple kinds of shoots, maybe your wedding um, galleries have all digitals free, whereas your newborns have you know, you're only allowed five downloads, something like that. So you can see where there might be use for a different kind of preset for different kinds of shoots. So let's say the next time I go to upload a gallery, it's a newborn gallery, I can, it'll ask me what preset do you want to apply upon upload and you choose newborn and it'll automatically apply whatever this set of settings is. Um, totally a huge time saver. So if you are so inclined, you should definitely use gallery presets. Okay, last thing. I totally forgot about this, but I'll do this quickly. So track your gallery activity, you guys. It's it's so fun to do. 
I joke saying that I spy on people, but I'm not really spying. I am watching for different trends in my galleries. I'm also looking for any suspicious activity in my galleries. I'm looking to see if lots of people maybe have items that are abandoned in their cart. Um, I want to make sure that my people are downloading the images that I'm providing them. So um, while I joke and say that I'm spying, I'm really, this is taking care of your client by watching what's going on. So you can go to reports, gallery visitors for this um, gallery visitor report here, which is all galleries. You can see all the activity in all of them. Or in each of your galleries, if you'd like, um, you just go to actions and then gallery visitors and you can see the activity for that specific gallery. Um, so let's go to gallery visitors right here. This information is really, really important to be able to see. If your client, for instance, says, I did not, I can't download my images. You can come here and say, you know, maybe they did, and it will tell you exactly how many, and you can click on these buttons and see not only how many, but what specific ones they are and when they were downloaded. Uh, you know, that gives you the tools to say, well, actually, I see that on um, November 20th at 3 p.m., you downloaded 18 images. Okay, so um, this kind of stuff is very valuable to have. The other thing that's super valuable to have is um, your email history. So if you go to studio and email, I don't have any in here. Um, maybe I have one in another one. But you will be able to see, here we go. I had an email automation that ran right here. So it went to all these people. Oh, look, I sent one to support. <laughs> I bet they loved that. Um, so not only can you preview what was sent right here, but you can also see the history. Okay, so this was processed, which means it left our server. It was delivered, which means that their server pinged us and let us know that they accepted it. Nobody's opened it or clicked or anything on it yet. Let's see if support opened my email. Nope, they deleted it. <laughs> but if they had opened it, you would see opened. You would also see clicked a link if they had um, taken action there. Um, you would see if it dropped, bounced, or deferred for any reason. Um, most of the time that happens because a client enters their email address incorrectly when they're accessing the gallery. So you'll be able to see all of that stuff. If you see that something was dropped or bounced or deferred, you know to look and maybe make sure that the email address is right and proactively reach out to your client before, you know, two weeks from now, they're like, why didn't you send that to me? Um, you can proactively take care of them that way. So super important to be able to do all that. Okay. I know there's a million questions. So let me come over here and go over to questions and I'll see what Kelly was able to answer as she was frantically typing and what I need to answer. Um, Okay, Daphne, when will music start working on Safari? That's actually a really good one. Um, when Safari changes. So basically a lot of browsers are, including um, Safari, are turning off the ability to have music autoplay. Um, and that's not a shoot proof thing, it's a browser thing. So your client will have to go so Safari can actually have it autoplay, but Safari defaults their um, browser to have autoplay turned off. Your client can go in and change that setting and it will then um, allow it to autoplay, but, but that's a Safari thing that they have turned off and there's really nothing we can do about that. And we're seeing it happen more and more with um, other browsers as well. So I wish I had a better answer for you on that. Okay, it looks like Kelly got Heidi's answer and Marion's answer and Jessica's and Brian's. Okay, so now I'm going to move over to chat. Thank you, Kelly, for tackling all these questions. That's awesome. Okay. So I'm over here in chat, just kind of looking around. Um, Jessica, gallery intro message is great, but I'd love to see examples of what people put there. Um, I believe we have a blog post about it. So go to shootproof.com slash blog, and I think you might find some examples there. Um, let's see. Is there a way to set up a gallery? Oh, Kelly answered that one already. Um, Christine, yes. Um, 
you can actually, Christine, um, load a, the print release into the preset. So if you put the um, print release in there and save that preset, you it will save for the next time. Okay, Kendra's interested in seeing print store, so we'll tackle that in just a second. Oh, cool, a bunch of you are. See, cropping scares me too. <laughs> uh, Danielle, can you please tell me the name to create my album? Hmm, I'm not sure what that means exactly. Um, but it looks like maybe it got answered. Okay, I think maybe that got answered. Um, Jessica, approving cropping. Yeah, um, if that's what you're referencing, Jessica, um, so there is no reason to, there really is no reason to approve cropping for self-fulfilled because you're not sending those images through shoot proof to the lab. So if you are lab fulfilling, yes, you definitely want to check those crops before you send it through. Um, if you're self-fulfilling, you're probably going to be uploading those images to Rose yourself anyways. So um, you would be cropping yourself. Oh, look, Kelly is being so organized by letting me. Okay, I answered that one. Can you load the print release? Yes. Um, no, you want it to be lab fulfilled in order to have approval over cropping. And Scott's as well. Awesome. I have used print store and received some nice business. Awesome. That's great to hear, Brian. Um, okay, so Scott, let's see. How do you set up a gift registry gallery for a wedding couple where friends and relatives can donate gift money to the couple to use towards dollars of prints and or portion of the wedding album that would be set up several months prior. There is really Scott, no like specific way. We don't, we did not create a way to do that in shoot proof. I have seen people get really creative doing that, but the issue is um, you've got to get that money to the client somehow and you have to be able to track how much they're using. So I think, um, Maybe shoot proof would not be the best option for that, to be quite honest with you, because where I'm sure there's a way to work around, maybe using invoices or something like that. I just think there are probably other products out there that were actually intended for use that way. And um, I wish my answer was different, but I just want to be totally honest and say maybe that wouldn't be, maybe shoot proof's not the best use for that. Okay. Uh, Danielle. Are there many companies that Collage uses or one? Uh, many. Okay, so let me, you guys, uh, bear with me for one second, and I'm going to open up another um, gallery of mine or another account of mine, another demo account that has Print Store enabled. And I'm going to slide it on over so you guys can see it. And here we go. Okay. Okay. Now, let me get back to you guys so I can see you. Okay, so in this gallery or in this account, I have shoe proof pay set up. So um, I can actually have print store on. So let me go to um, settings here and turn on the print store. Do, 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 shopping cart. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Shopping cart and print store. Oh, good, it's already there. Okay, let's preview this gallery so that we can see it as the client would. Now, what this print store offers is items that you might not see or you do not see in the partner labs, okay? Um, these are fun photo gifts, okay? These are not like fine art kind of prints. These are photo gifts. So, if you have clients throughout the year who have purchased lots of beautiful wall art and everything, and now it's the holidays, maybe you want to give them the opportunity to order gifts or something like that for friends and family. This is what it's going to look like. Oh no, I have admin privileges on. I should not have used this. I'm going to browse as guest. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So this is the gallery looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Um, so we still have the images, right? So we can browse or whatever, or you can visit the print store, start your project. And I have to say, okay, I am leaving the gallery. I'm going to, it gives your logo powered by collage. And here we go. This drops us right into collage where I can start to design 
whatever it is I want to design. So let's say, um, let's say I want to make a blanket. I actually do want to make a, a blanket for my daughter with our dog's pictures on it. Um, so I'm going to make her a fleece. I'm going to go and I'm going to start my blanket. The cool part about this is it's going to pull in all of your images from your galleries. Um, if you have, if the client um, already has favorites, it's going to show them. And if there are albums, it'll have things organized in such a way. Okay. So you can either um, drag and drop. There we go. Click an item and it'll add it. If you start to click more items, it'll kind of rearrange it. You can also click over here, click designs. Maybe you want to make something like this and have a word on there, or maybe you want a bunch of images. Okay. So there's all different ways you can do this. You can change, obviously, the words. You can change the background. Um, you can, oh, look at this. I'm going to make this my background. So basically, it's a builder. Okay. So if your clients want to order some fun stuff, it's a builder for them. Okay. So maybe I now want to go back and, um, I forget how to go back. Home? No, your projects. Oh, <laughs> you guys can see how many projects I've already started on. <laughs> so let's go. Maybe I want to do um, mugs. I actually do want to get a mug for my mom, too. I need to get ordering this stuff. Um, I want to do a blue for her. Um, isn't that pretty, you guys? It's so cool. Okay, so anytime you start making something, it's going to drop you into the builder and it's going to give them their photos. Um, so if they exit the print store and they go into regular collage, they can upload their own photos. But anytime your clients order something through the print store with your images that you have provided them, you will get a 30%, um, what do they call it? Margin through the end of January, I believe. And then after that, it goes to 20%. Um, so, and that includes, um, taxes and shipping and the product. So that's the print store. Does anybody have any questions about it? I wish they can go back and offer 30% to photographer indefinitely. Um, we've heard that feedback. Fingers crossed, Brian. Um, awesome. Heidi, I'm so glad you came. Okay. Can you use both types of pricing for a gallery? The gifts here are great. Not right now, but that's also something that we hear so much. So I know that our development team is working on um, finding a way to do that. Um, of course, we want to remember that not everybody wants to do it that way. So we're trying to figure out how to do that option to people because a lot of photographers um, would rather control their own pricing on their fine art things. Um, and some also want to control their pricing here. So we're trying to figure out how to make everybody happy. So we will um, keep an eye out that for that, Heidi. I hope that becomes available. Brian, 30% ended ends January 31st. Jessica, um, every item in here is in the U.S. Some are labs that are owned by our print labs. Um, so like, just as an example, I don't know if this is true, but like maybe one of them is a subsidiary of WHCC. I don't know the actual... Um, names of all of them. I think like, uh, I actually don't know. <laughs> I was going to throw out a name, but I'm not sure. So I don't want to say anything. Um, but it depends on the item that's being ordered. For instance, blankets are fulfilled through somebody who specializes in blankets. Socks are fulfilled through somebody who specializes in making photo socks. Um, so it's multiple places. Um, yes, Danielle, you could have two galleries and put one to collage and one to the lab. Definitely. Jessica, yes, Shootproof has vetted them 100%. In fact, um, I know a lot of our executives have visited many of the actual labs and watched them printing. Um, I've seen a video of them printing the blankets and the socks. It's pretty cool. Um, so we've definitely visited and been there. And I've actually ordered cards through their um, thank you cards. And I, I liked the cards. Um, there are holiday cards in there too. So um, just an option. Will there be a copy of this webinar? Yes. Yes, there will be. Um, you will get right after it ends, you will get an email with a replay. Agreed, Heidi. Yes. 
Awesome. Okay. I'm going to look back in the questions tab because I see there's a red dot there, which means maybe somebody asked another question over there. Um, but I think, um, Jessica, did Kelly answer all of yours? I can't really tell. Uh, let's see. Can you use more than one watermark in a gallery? For example, a subtle one in the main gallery and a loud obnoxious one in the vendor album. Um, okay. So yeah, actually not, I guess, no, would be the answer. You wouldn't be able to, um, for those of you who are wondering, Jessica's asking, can you use more than one watermark in a gallery? For example, a subtle one in the main gallery and a loud obnoxious one in the vendor album. The short answer is no, because what the vendor is seeing is actually what the other people are seeing. Um, but you can put a loud obnoxious one on their downloads. I know you're probably trying to prevent them from screenshotting though. So that answer is no. Okay. I think that is it, you guys, unless there are other questions. I went a whole hour. Sorry to keep you so long, but I hope you learned a few things. Um, while I'm saying goodbye, I'm going to put this screen up real quick so you guys can take a screenshot if you'd like. Um, these are all the places you can go to get help. If you want to look at um, old webinars um, that are already pre-recorded, you can go to help.shootproof.com and click on webinars. We have them for every feature within ShootProof. And we also have photographer spotlight webinars where we have um, awesome um, photographers who use ShootProof, just like you guys, um, who come and give kind of presentations on unique things they do to that kind of help other photographers. So that's awesome. You're welcome, everybody. It is Friday Eve, which means it's almost the weekend. So I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I hope to see you next week. If you have not registered for our upcoming webinars, um, go to shootproof.community. Um, they're all in there, I, I believe through the end of December. And also just keep an eye out in your account. If you log in each week, you should see a pop-up with the following week's webinar. So um, hope to see you again super soon. And thanks for being so great. Keep an eye out for an email from us in a couple hours with a survey. We want to hear what else you want to learn about. We want to bring you more content like this. So please take 30 seconds, just fill it out. Let us know if you learned something, if you want to learn more, and let us know. We read through literally every single one of them. So don't be shy. Um, let us know what you want to learn. All right. Thank you, guys. It sure was great seeing everybody. And we'll see you again soon. All right. Bye-bye.